The game that we're going to be playing actually involves the whole first year class, about 230 or 240 students, and they'll be actually trading securities. They are able to buy private information about the securities. This is a game where they actually physically trade the securities, so they're actually holding the certificates. They're all in a big pit, and they and, and the, the, the companies that they're buying and selling are colors, so they're saying things like, buying green, buying green at 40, and somebody else is saying, selling green at 42, and then they make transactions. The whole purpose of the game is to let people know how does information get into stock prices, to what extent are they able to analyze this information, and, how, and, and are they actually somebody who can outperform the market? That's the thing they have to ask themselves. There's some groups that come incredibly organized. There's these large, they form themselves into large teams. Uh, each person on the team has a specialized role. They come armed with very complicated Excel spreadsheets where they're ready to type, into the, type the information in and it's going to spit out the trading decision. Uh, other people don't do any of that and come and trade much more intuitively. And, uh, it's interesting to sort of compare which of the approaches sort of works better. But I'm impressed, frankly, given how much the students have to do uh, in their other coursework and extracurricular activities and so on, uh, that they're actually uh, often come incredibly well prepared for the game. In this game, the advantage goes to those who can process the information better. Because, in fact, all the information is ultimately available in this game. It's all, it's all private information, and usually no one person gets all of the information, but everybody sees all information is seen by somebody, and it mostly eventually gets into the market price. But we look at the process of how it gets into the market price. It doesn't get in there immediately. And the people who get the information fastest and who can analyze it the best have, have a big edge over those who are more casual about how they approach this. I'd say the game connects to the, the course in a number of ways. Um, you know, one thing I, I try to do in the course is to bring in ideas from other disciplines, for example psychology. One thing I'm quite interested in is some of the irrational things people do when they trade. So I talk a little bit in the course about how ordinary people trade stocks. We now have a lot of evidence that when people trade, when ordinary people trade, they actually seem to trade too much sometimes. Uh, there's also evidence that they trade in the wrong way. For example, when they sell stocks, they often sell stocks that have gone out, up since they bought them rather than stocks that have gone down since they bought them. Uh, that might sound natural uh, to the casual observer, but in many ways it's the wrong thing to do. So the trading game actually helps me in many ways. One thing that's very clear when you watch the students trade is that there's actually a lot of trading going on. Uh, as there is among ordinary households in real life. But there's a sense in which people are probably trading too much, um, and there are many reasons for that. For instance, I, th I think that has something to do with overconfidence. People think they know something about where a stock is going to go, but they don't know nearly as much as they actually think they do. And so in some ways the game illustrates that. Another thing that the game illustrates, which is something that Roger touched on, uh, is this idea that the average return of all the investors participating in the game has to be the market return. So some people have to lose to the market, other people are going to do better than the market. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind when you're trading stocks. You have to remember that someone's going to win, but someone's going to lose. And why is it that you're going to be the person that's going to win? You might not be. And given that we individuals are often trading with very sophisticated institutions, it's much more likely that we individuals are going to be the ones who are going to lose. And so that should perhaps uh, temper the degree to which we trade stocks. At the end of the game, often there's a, a group of people who actually do very poorly in the game. And, and uh, I guess they've gotten exploited by the other people who, who have used information much more, much much better in the game. So uh, obviously uh, they, they learn a lesson in that. Uh, the, what we want them to know is, not, not, obviously many people maybe are appropriately confident and many people are inappropriately confident. We want them to learn ab about to what extent, where they might fit in there, where, what is their expertise, when are they in a position where they actually have the competitive advantage 
and when are they in a position where they actually are, are in the weak position. And if they learn to recognize this, this would presumably help them throughout their whole life. Seven green for 40!